Very well. The question has been put as to the importance, the relative importance of sacrifices to the earth, endangerments to the earth, relative to the oil, crude oil, that is spurting, yet spurting, off the coast of the United States and to the effects of the land, the animal life, the mineral life, and like that. And so it must be said that that which is oil, crude oil, is useful and important to the earth, particularly when it is beneath the surface, when it is contained within the earth. Once it has broken the surface of the earth, it has little and no value to the earth itself. And so then it becomes a human resource. While it is within the earth, it is a planetary resource. It is easing, it is comfort to the planet. In its own way, and though you would not think so, it is the oil itself that helps as well with the surface temperature of the earth. And it has a great balancing quality as well to all of the other resources. It is that which is in complement to many different things because, after all, it is made of the remnants of many different times and qualities of life. And so, in this capacity, it is useful and necessary to the earth. Once, in its human scale, it begins to be extracted from the earth, then it is a human resource and of course human ramifications associated with these and those that touch upon all of humanity and all of the other elements and kingdoms as well. This will last some time, this that has been created. It has not been capped, it has not been captured and those that are in command of the situation do not yet know how to relieve it. And in their attempts to cap part of it, if they are not careful, it will in some ways spout or create the same situation elsewhere. Now, what created it? is that, in essence, the flow of the oil, as it is transmitted, as it is pumped through for human needs and such, that is no longer appropriately regulated. How it is brought forth, in what scale, in what capacity, at what levels, is erratic. And it is erratic because within the earth itself, the temperatures and the movements and the seismic movements of the earth itself are changing the rate at which that travels. And this has not been accounted for. And so this created a great deal of pressure in a certain area and in a certain time that could not sustain or manage or where that pressure could not be calibrated correctly. And so here you have then a movement of grand proportion that now will be a larger operation until a solution can be found for it. There has been loss of life. There will be other loss of life yet associated with how to fix the problem for some solutions that will be arrived at in a hurry to bring about a proper and a quick end to this will also then bring about dangerous activities to some that will offer themselves to the project or to some of the theories that will come about of how to solve the situation. There will indeed be damage to, as you might imagine, to the elements of the area, to the waters. These waters will be contaminated. They will be carried to more than even a few states of the Americas and then will make their way to other places as well. And the fumes, the toxic fumes of some of this will also be then lifted into the clouds and will become part of a toxic element within the air quality itself and so the disaster in the making in essence continues 
animal life will be harmed as well. And I will even say to you that because of the movement of the oceans in this way, some of the animal life that has been known to pattern itself and flow itself into these waters will divert itself, will move elsewhere, so that the condition of the fish then, the certain schools of fish will move into other waters altogether than those that they would normally occupy. And so here you have movement, a movement that will in one way and another affect a greater part of the world, not all of the world, but a greater part of the world. This catastrophe, this falling out, or what you would term it, will be repeated again. This is not the only such occurrence. There will be another occurrence of this kind in another country. Because of the effect of this, the next occurrence will be handled differently, better to the degree that it can be better. But still the oil will spill and still it will contaminate certain waters, making other waters more precious, more important. And so here the worldwide call to protect resources, to resource the earth, to grant resources their own forms and measures of protection, this will come more to the surface. And you will see that pitting, it will pit in some ways man against corporate man, if you like. It will restructure different thought. And you will see that as with many subjects today, one law will oppose another law. One lobby will lobby another law. And you will have borne another struggle. That struggle will give rise to change and to the protection of certain measures and to certain animals, but you will not see all of this take in the way that you would like to see it take or as soon as you would like to see it take. In this way, it will bring worldwide attention to an important subject and to how this subject of how oil and other resources are used or managed or controlled or in some way leveraged in the world. This then changes world economies as well. And so here you see the birth not only of a problem, but in some ways of a solution, of something that begins to move and shift a way of thinking to something, away from something else. But first you will see some of the movement then that leaves an unsatisfactory distaste in the elements and the qualities until it moves beyond that. Very well. It has been addressed. And now I will say to you, are there questions relative to this subject that you have that may be answered? Yes, very well. Is there something we need to do to help, to assist, to support? We meaning general, not just me. Not generally in that way, no. However, recognize this is your planet. And you may say it to yourself just that way. This is my planet. And while certainly I do not claim ownership of the planet or the world or its resources, it is nonetheless mine. Now, this is a surprising healing benefit because you would think, well, what good does that do to say it is my planet or possess it in some way? But it does not do this. In essence, it says, I am part of this planet. But even when you say it is my planet, that is the intention of the world. It says, I care deeply about this and all that the planet thinks and does. It is mine, as if it were mine, you see? And so this does change. It changes how the elements respond to the human kingdom. When you do take ownership or possession of something, why do you do so? Because it is important to you. It becomes more important to you when it is yours. 
And so it is not your problem, but it is your planet. And how you feel about your planet is and has an almost immediate feeling, healing, blessing to it. So yes. See? Indeed. Yes. This may sound a little far out, but um, I, I know that it is possible to have dimensional shifts physically. Um, is it possible that we can be of assistance to the animals, uh, the birds, the aquatic life, any of that, to bring about a shift into a different dimension while this is being addressed and cleaned up and then coming back? Yes. Okay. Not entirely, because you see, come what may, the animal kingdom belongs very much to the earth. And you see, it is not as interested in one individual life as it is in life itself. And so one animal would be completely willing to sacrifice itself to oil slick or to any other anomaly or disaster or such, much more than the human kingdom that knows the difference or the value of life, of higher forms of life. And so the animal kingdom will cure itself because it has a community effect, a cumulative community mind, and it will draw upon that to heal itself through this process, even through the life. And so the word has already gone out to stay away from that area to the very utmost that it can stay away. And of course, the very physical signals themselves, be it the fumes and the feel and the texture and all of this has already moved out all of this energetically. However, that feel, that environment is a physical environment and all things that are part of that and all physical environments are affected. Your breath here now affects that environment, but in so doing, your thoughts affected as well. So you see the answer that I give you is a simple one, but one that tells you do both things. Always what you do is of benefit to the earth. It is always that you are stewards of the earth. And so any thought or purpose that you put any feeling into the earth is immediately received, immediately. Does not need to travel from here to there on a plane and say it has arrived. It is an immediate effort in Gaia's ingratitude. Thank you. Will the uh, coal mines be affected, cause change like this oil disaster is, causing change? Will the coal mines be affected in that what, sweet one? Will there be change in how they are run and managed? No, not now. Not now, not yet. Because again, those things that humanity, those things that become human resources, humanity demands these now, expects these now, and is not yet finding itself in a solution-oriented nature. It does not say, I will take only this much, and please, please keep all safe before you deliver to me my monthly usage. Please make certain that all are in compliance or all are in good health. It does not do so. It simply expects what it expects on a monthly basis. And so, not yet. And so, first it must be that the value of humanity is raised. Then the value of the human condition can also be raised. And so, neither of these have been addressed yet. Humanity is only now beginning to address the need for energy or excess energy. But you see, the only solutions it has arrived at thus far is how to exchange energy credits. I'll take some of yours, you take some of mine, you see, and we will offset it that way. And so it has not yet arrived at a more formal or long-lasting solution, but it will. But in, your, in response to your answer, no, the coal mines will yet be the coal mines, both in this country, in the United States, and in others in which they are given this way. And these are only some 
of the mines that are relatively unsafe. The copper mines are not much different. Neither are the diamond mines or all of those others in which something can be extracted from these. For century upon century and in this particular cycle and in others, those that have made their work below ground have also been thought of as less than or beneath the ground in how they have been respected, you see? And it has been this way. Those that were called long and long ago earth dwellers, earth dwellers in general, were considered to be the same way that you think of now as coal mine dwellers. Those that dwelled within the earth were thought of as lower or less than those that dwell above the earth. Now, interestingly enough, and though you have not asked, I will volunteer it just the same, is that in times to come, far into the future, in which the surface of the earth becomes even more unstable than it is now, there will be many more very sweet and sustainable and very beautiful earth cities within the earth with very warm, cozy accommodations that are also very filled with light. And these will be more protected, more safe places to be than those that are above the earth, you see? And this will first be discovered by moving into some of the space explorations that humanity will do. And so upon the moon and upon Mars that it will return to as well, it will discover very interesting ways to use space that is beneath the earth or mound like just beneath the earth. And then it will occur, well, perhaps we can do this upon the earth or within the earth as well. Different ways to build. And of course, a change or shortage in some resources will simply inspire creativity in that direction as well. Yes? Very well. Now, in terms of the earth, earth changes, earth movements and such, the earth is in a natural cycle of heightened activity. It is natural for the earth to be in this cycle. It is not because of harm that has been done to the earth. It is not because of untoward thoughts or actions on the part of humanity to the earth. It is simply natural now and for this cycle for the earth to be in this stage of activity. For the most part, most of the changes that are taking place are those that you cannot see. And they take place at the core, at the very core of the earth, where the very spin, the very rotation, the very elements that are there are moving in a more friction, in a quicker, in a heightened, in an accelerated, agitated capacity. And this creates then waves, waves, fluctuations in sound, that in order to loosen that which has been stuck, in order to move and to accelerate the activity of the earth for humanity's benefit and for the benefit of all that is the earth, this vibration outward and outward from the very core of the earth is jogging loose energy and resources and water and other elements and other possibilities and all of that which can resource the earth, particularly when other sources are limited. This unfortunately has the effect of also jogging a bit the plates, the plate tectonics of the earth. And so there will continue to be movements of the earth, earthquakes, Many of these will take place at the levels of the ocean, on the ocean floor, all round the earth, particularly off and next to the coast of the Alaskas. Earlier we have spoken then of the oil emergency of the time being. And of course you already know that it has been understood or well into the plans to excavate more oil that is located in, near, and around the Alaskas. This may be put on a very temporary hold, but more than likely not, for although approval of all of this has not yet completely been given, already the plans have been in motion for a very long time. 
longer than you already imagine. And so it is already almost taking place beneath your noses as it would be with or without the appropriate granting of such rights. This will remain unstable for a time and will more than likely lead to a few other emergencies. Some of these will be averted, others will not. And so off the coast of the Alaskas, the ocean floor there is thinning in certain ways and creating small fissures there. For now, those fissures are allowing just the right appropriate amounts of energy to bubble up or out to the surface, the movements. But if those were also capped or redirected or stunted in some way, then that would create a rift in that part of the ocean that would then move in a variety of different directions and find its way to other parts of the North American coast as well as other parts of the Eastern European and into the Russian Federation and there cause their own havoc in that direction as well. The migratory patterns of some of the ocean dwellers will be disrupted or moved in that way as well. And so there will be perhaps some that will lose their way here and there as they are prone to do during these disruptive cycles as well. And they may benefit by assistance from humanity. If this could be anticipated then there would be those sound, those particular sonars and sound that could direct them in advance elsewhere or through another path. However, that is not seen at this time as it is likely to occur. It is, however, a possibility. The earth will continue to make itself known or make itself present in terms of earthquake will say to you that there is another that will more than likely make itself into the southern hemisphere into the southern hemisphere of the south america and as well there is a small chance of one that will be again into the russian federation yet another movement or two into the Indonesias and the islands that are occupied there, and that may very well tr trigger the eruption of one of the volcanoes in the Indonesian chain, which I tell you is all full, aware, alive, and active at this time. It is also likely that there is another volcano in the Central American region that is somewhat in questionable danger, if you will call it that, one in the Europe. And so this chain is strong and active now. Of these, there is a small possibility that the great grandfather here in the northern, the Rainier, is active as well as a possibility. But he is not angry now, I will tell you. He is not angry and he was quite pacific, as has been seen of late. And so there is not an immediate danger in this area. For the most part, it is the oceans that are active and crackling with energy. And so the earth continues to move and to reshape itself and to emerge with all of the different constructive resources that it can offer to humanity. There is little that can be done to avert some of the changes, nor is there a reason for the earth to avert these changes. They are not meant to endanger humanity. And there will come a time where these can be seen, predicted, relative accuracy, so that in its own way humanity will be able to make other choices. And so for now it is very important to remain intuitive, to remain aware, aware of one's environment, aware of the choices that one is able to make aware of the decisions of where you will place yourself and why, and then do so freely. Place yourself where you wish to be. 
place yourself freely and safely and securely upon the earth. For one way or another, you are fastened to the earth. You see, gravity makes it so. And so you can direct yourself where you will. And whether you find yourself in a creative moment or a moment of fear, you will walk the same path one way or another. And so you may as well walk that creative path. Now, do you have questions relative to this subject? Anything that is relative to the Earth's consequences at this time is the subject that I offer to you now. Thank you. Um, considering all that you've said, I'm thinking also of the weather patterns. And what I would like to know is how much effect the HARP program and the spraying of the chems, chemicals in the atmosphere and all of that kind of thing, how much effect does that actually have in addition to what is normally going on or naturally happening? Very well. Approximately 1%. Yeah, surprising, isn't it? Approximately 1%. Now, that 1% is very important. What if we were to say, well, we will obliterate 1% of the population. That adds up to quite a number. Quite disastrous, you see. And so, yes, it is a disastrous number, but it is 1%. And so, humanity's most destructive forces are not truly that significant. Interesting, you see. The earth is able to repair itself, redrawing itself, renovate itself, renew itself in more ways. And so humanity's damaging effects are many, but it's healing effects of what it is able to do for the earth as well. And its love and its compassion and its companionship for the earth is able to do quite a bit as well. Now, those that run these particular experiments, those that cause them to be as they are, they will tire. These projects will lose their funding in relatively short order as well because they are not yielding the results that had been expected, you see. So it is not as much as they will have found their conscience or their heart or like that. It will simply be affecting their pocketbooks a little bit more than what the payoff is. And so then they will make their little attempts here or there or their other concentrations. Interestingly, surprisingly, the economic debacle of one seems to have the rolling rock effect on almost all things and even to that degree. And so, yes, there is little less to spray and to do and a little bit less funds to go around in one direction or another. And many will simply tire of that. It is a tiring project to do. It is tiring energetically to those that find themselves in those roles, you see. They will simply tire of it and decide, I had just as better spend my time or energy or resources elsewhere not as much payoff as they had hoped for. And this will be the case with many such things. Yes? Yeah, thank Indeed. you. Indeed. We, uh, we hear often about the rising sea levels or the sinking earth, depending on how one perceives it. Um, in this most beautiful part of our planet, of the Pacific Northwest, are a series of chains of islands and up near Canada and through that area. Will we see a significant rise in water in those areas in the near future, or is it sometime into the distant future? Not in these particular areas that you describe. More of the rise and the difficulties that the island nations are to have, these will be, again, more to the areas of the distant and far east to the Indonesias and many of these islands. In other areas of the globe, yes, the earth is not exactly sinking, for you will see that even with one finger, it can push up, up, 
on the Earth's crust as well. And there will be new land formations coming forward from some of the rifts and things that we described earlier as well, you see. And so this will be pushing its way up in the way that it does. And yes, other islands will be surrounded by a great deal of water. The benefit to this is that they will see it coming for the most part. An island, like it or not, can be evacuated. An entire landlocked country, if there be a disaster, cannot. And so with a bit of anticipation. Now, successful movement or relocation of some beings to other lands will then inspire other ideas of how to rebuild or how to reclaim certain lands and that it is possible then to relocate. But in all instances, it will not necessarily be possible. However, there will be a further redistribution of peoples, a vast migration of peoples to other lands. In fact, you will see that even here in the northern Americas, you will see that many, many, I tell you, will take themselves to the Alaskas and to other remote places that they would not otherwise have considered home or a home-like environment. There will be a greater interest in reclaiming that land because it will be seen as relatively safe, relatively resourceful, where one can be in more ease than in some of the other, particularly once a fear of this and a fear of that begins to take hold. The idea to be a little bit more removed, a little bit more remote, will come to be a fine idea again, as will be relocating to other countries, emigrating from one country to another for reasons of both business and career and resources will come. Over the next one, two, and three years, you will see a good amount of this as well. And at first, it will be a little bit difficult for one country to grant such access to another, but the very popular movement of it will begin to simply take hold. It will be a wave that somehow cannot be stopped once it is started, and they will only be able to follow that wave to its natural conclusion. Thank you. Um, will any of the land masses or portions of Atlantis or Lemura be be um, emerge from the ocean? Not exactly in the way that you have phrased it. However, parts of it or important aspects of it, important finds, will have a way of washing up on shore or be discovered as the shallowness of some waters begins to redistribute itself there will be discoveries of an underwater nature that will be Atlantean so that there will be an acknowledgement in Atlantis and perhaps it will not be called exactly that perhaps they will say Poseidia perhaps they will say those lands that were a long time ago civilized or the cultured world of long ago in the same way that they describe an ancient Greece that they cannot truly describe they will begin to describe a world before that one you see and so there will be acknowledgement of this but not in the way that you refer to Atlantis, not in the way that you say, oh, the great technological age of Atlantis and the great beings and how they lived. To them, it will seem a little bit more like an archaeological find. They will give it importance, but in that respect, not in the greatness that it deserves to have. That will come longer ago or forward into the future when the romantic quality of it becomes important again. Some of the finds will have have a beauty to them, a culture to them that is recognized at least by some as prominent, as important, and then will become a romanticized nature of it yet to come. Until the next moment brings us together, dear ones.